Hello, in this video, we're going to be going step by step through my portable console case pattern. This pattern is meant to fit a portable game console such as the Nintendo Switch. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Before we get started, let's go ahead and go through all of the pattern pieces uh, so that we know everything that we have uh, is ready to go and I can explain a little bit about my process. So first off, for this main piece, um, you are going to need one exterior and two in lining. Each of the pieces needs to be interfaced in a woven interfacing. But throughout this video, you're going to notice that I am not using interfacing on the back of my lining. This is because I like to use waterproof canvas. Uh, waterproof canvas has this nice rubberized backing and it's already really um, stabilized on its own. So if you don't see my woven interfacing there, it's not because I'm lazy, it's because I like to use this waterproof stuff. You're also going to need two pieces of foam out of that same pattern piece here. So that's going to be piece uh, B, right? Now the flap is piece A and you're going to need one exterior and one lining, both interfaced with woven interfacing and a stabilizer. I like to use Peltex. So this is Peltex 70, which is the sew-in kind. It does not have any glue dots um, and it is not trimmed down yet because that's one of the steps. All right, now, then you're going to have the back. Now the back of your exterior is composed of two pieces. So you have the bottom piece, which is piece uh, C, and then piece D is the top. Did get me started on why I did that, but yeah. So you got these two pieces of exterior fabric also interfaced with woven interfacing, okay? Now, for the lining of the pocket, so my exterior I actually used canvas. So for my lining, I'm using a lighter quilting weight cotton. Only one of the pieces needs to be interfaced. The other one can remain uh, as is. So the piece that's going to be interfaced is also going to be the piece that's going to be the main portion of the pocket that you will see when you open up the zipper because that's where the game card slots are going to go. And for that, you need a long 13 to 14 inch strip of one inch elastic. For the zipper, you're going to need a 14 inch all purpose zip. I'm just going to use a standard YKK zipper right here. You can use a wider zip if you want, but be prepared to have to kind of adjust your pieces, um, particularly cut away from this top piece if you need to, if you are using a, a, a larger zip, like a number five, um, which I know a lot of bag makers like to use, totally fine. Um, but since this is kind of like a pseudo version of a hidden pocket technique uh, for the zipper, then th you'll, you may find the zipper heads on a larger zipper to be kind of difficult to use with this, but it's totally up to you if you want to do it. Just be prepared to have to kind of work with it to get this back piece to match the front here when you're putting things together. Now for the flap, you're also going to need to have magnetics. I know a lot of people are confused about magnetics and electronics. This is not going to be an issue for you with this pattern um, or for electronics in general. The kinds of magnets that are produced for bag making are not anywhere near powerful enough to do anything to an electronic. Okay, so we're not using IBM mainframes from 1965. We're good for now. Okay, so that's all of the pieces. Let's get going with the first step, which is going to be assembling the flap. So you can see I already went ahead and I put my label on here. This is absolutely an optional step. If you have bag labels that you'd like to use on the flap, um, I recommend putting them about an inch above the edge. You're going to be stitching only a quarter inch away, but then you're going to turn around and you're going to top stitch this down at a quarter inch. So you want to leave plenty of room here also so it doesn't, uh, how do I explain it? It kind of starts to tug and lay the flap incorrectly. So that's just a note about tags. So you're going to take this exterior piece and just set it to the side. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab your lining piece and flip it over so that it's wrong side up. You're going to take your pattern as a guide and lay it down. Now, if you're wondering why I have this fancy acrylic, I bought acrylics from Tops and Bobbins, and they do carry 
clearly my my switch case pattern and it has handy holes for you to mark where the magnet should go and this will be the center of the magnet so I'm just gonna mark where those centers should be and you don't have to get the fancy little acrylic what you can do is you can just uh, take a hole punch and hole punch where the magnet guide is uh, right in the center and then use that and that that's perfectly acceptable so we'll just move that to the side and you can see I've got my two little marks then what I do to install the uh, these magnets and I am using 18 millimeter you can use 14 millimeter totally optional I just take the washer with the, the hole in the middle and I center it up and then I draw the lines where the prongs are supposed to go I'll do the same thing over on the other side too and mark those very gently take a seam ripper and insert into those prong areas that you marked and just gently slide up. I mean gently because I'm basically taking this part and pushing it toward myself. And I mean, I, I'm all for blood for the blood god, but that's a little not good for a YouTube video. So be careful. Don't sue me for emotional damage. And once you have those prong holes, then you can take the male end, which is going to be, <laughs> sorry, the magnet pieces with the pointy end sticking up. I'll leave that to the imagination. On the front end of the lining fabric for the flap, insert the magnets, just like that. And the reason you wanted to use the male ends and the flap is because it'll lay flatter and it'll be a lot easier for you to flip right side out. So that's typically why I put those in. Now, you could at this point just put the washers in and close them up. However, I like to put a little bit of spare stabilizer on the back of these before I put the washer on. It makes for a snugger fit. So I'm just gonna gently slit some holes into some spare Peltex. And just slip that down, same thing over here. Again, be very careful. Don't just go, wow, with this guy. Now you can put the washer on. So the washers go on each of these. I want you to fold these outward. I have seen some people fold them inward. You can do that, but it doesn't make for as snug of a fit to the fabric. So I actually like to fold them outward like this. See? It's another reason to use the stabilizer as well is because it keeps these guys from ripping through the fabric. So overall, you'll have a much more snug fit. There you go. So basically, these guys aren't going to spin around or show a gap between the fabric and, and themselves. All right, so that's how you put those in. Now, you're going to leave this to the side. We'll get to that in a bit. You're going to take this lining piece and you're going to take your exterior piece for the flap and you're going to put them together right sides together like this. So if your lining is right side up, then your exterior goes right side down like this. And take clips or pins and stick them together because what we're going to do is we're going to sew them. I'll just go all the way around the edge, placing these wonderful clips where they should go. I kind of get generous with the clips, to be honest. You do not have to be as generous as me with clips. Okay, leave this top edge open. This is the hole that we're gonna use to flip everything right side out. So if you close that up, you're gonna wonder how we're gonna deal with this later, however. <laughs> and then of course, kind of, I kind of, because I have a uh, label, I like to kind of push things to make sure I don't have like this poofy section in the middle of my lining. So that looks good. So what we'll do is we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance 
with a normal stitch length all the way around the edge of this. Okay, gently lift up your presser foot. And at a quarter inch, you start at the top right corner and you're going to stitch down and then back just a couple of stitches and that's going to lock that stitch in place. Ooh, got my thread in the way, that's fine. Be careful when going around this rounded corner. I go as slowly as I can and kind of move and pivot the fabric as I can. Go at whatever speed you find comfortable. Again, just a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. And here at the other corner, again, very carefully. Some machines like to go fast. I'm using an industrial machine with a servo motor because I am too scared to use it without one. And when you get to that other corner, you're going to back stitch to lock it into place. When you're done with the sewing, you're going to take a small pair of scissors. See, I almost reached for the big ones. And I just want you to clip into these little corners, but not through them. This will ensure that they will lay flat when you flip this right side out. You can also actually just snip away little triangles of fabric and that will also help. So just like that, either way works. So only in the corner area do you need to worry about that. A straight edge, not really a big deal. So if you want, you just cut it slanted way like this and then come back around at the opposite slant and make the little triangles. So you just need to snip that. Always keep a clean work area. And then you're gonna use this opening up here to flip this right side out. I don't try to force it. I just kind of flip at my own pace. I have actually had zippers break when I have been too forceful. <laughs> And it is, it is horrifying, especially if it's at the end of the bag. Okay. Now, I like to take a point turner, but I like to use the slanted end on it here. So the, like more of the, the uh, stub down end as opposed to using the tapered pointed end because this can actually like poke through. Whereas this section here has been ground down so it kind of comes to a, a flat end, but it's, it's circular, which is great for these circular uh, kinds of corners. And I just take that and I just rub it along the inside. You can also use chopsticks, a uh, pencil eraser works well in a bind, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, and then just for me, I actually like to take, I do like to take the pointy end and just kind of score the inside seam where I made that seam. Okay, so for that, you can also take this and steam it down, but I don't do that. <laughs> I'll get to that in a bit. However, now you need to get the Peltex or your stabilizer, whichever it is you want to use. And you're gonna take the stabilizer and you'll realize the stabilizer is the same size as the original pattern piece. You're going to want to trim it down all the way around the edge where you would have sewn. So you're going to trim that down and uh, you, you may have to do this about a quarter inch to a half inch uh, in order to get it to fit. What you don't want it to do is you don't want it to be too small so it doesn't get caught in your top stitch, which is going to be a quarter inch away from the edge. Um, and you also don't want it to be too big, so this basically bows like this and doesn't lay flat. So we're just going to take some nice large scissors and trim away about a quarter of an inch. And you just want to go around that edge that you would have sewn, because if you take away from the top, it won't be correct either. We'll trim that out at the end. 
So trimming that quarter inch away. Also, if you only take off from the sides, it won't fit correctly in the corner. So you see, we took, yeah, about, about a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then you're going to take this and you're going to gently slide it in. I try to go from the back and that's only because you don't want it to get caught in the seam line. You want it to be under or above the seam on each end and it'll just be a lot easier that way. So we're just gonna kinda slide that in there. And don't worry if the Peltex is poking out from the top. We'll get to that in a bit. Just wanna make sure it gets all the way to the bottom because otherwise it'll be kind of, I don't know, floppy in your little corners here. Okay, just work it in. Now, I like to take clips and put the clips around the edge. So I'm kind of like pushing down on this to make sure that I get it and clip that down. It'll hold it for me. So pushing slightly and toward each other with both hands to ensure I catch it at the bottom. Because if you don't, what will happen is that Peltex will start to kind of slip around or it could bend up in the flap as it's used over time. So you're ensuring that it's going to get sandwiched in your top stitch by doing this. Usually at the sides, I don't need to worry about it. It's only at the bottom because sometimes you can push as much as you can to try to get it to place correctly at the bottom, but it'll never do it right. So, okay. Again, I'm gonna kind of force feed it to the bottom here. And it's caught pretty well. Go me and clip it down. I do advise clips, you don't have to use them, but I do like them a lot. <laughs> All right, and you see there's a little bit of excess along the top, but don't worry about that. Now we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna top stitch. What you'll do is you'll top stitch a quarter inch away. You can just do an eighth of an inch, but I suggest a quarter inch just to ensure that you catch that Peltex um, so it doesn't curl up or peel away in some of the spots. I want you to set your machine to a top stitch length that's usually four to 4.5 millimeters. At the top, you are going to back stitch and very slowly work your way around the flap. I'm not going to skip any steps because I want you to see how slowly and carefully I go just to make sure this looks good. This top stitch isn't just a construction stitch. It's also meant to look good. So if you need to stop and do a manual pivot like what I'm doing with the hand cranking, do it. You will feel better about the end product and you won't panic. Well, I can't guarantee that. Okay, coming down. Now, if you are someone like me who used a label, here is a part where you need to be a little careful this is also why I said to put it an inch away from the bottom edge. We're coming up on the other corner. I say, I've been sewing for 18 years and I still don't trust myself to go around this corner with the top stitch <laughs> without hand cranking. So if you're doing this too, don't feel badly, you are not alone. All right, and then we'll go all the way to the end. When you get to the end, I want you to backstitch. Okay, once you're done doing that, if you have any extra up here of the stabilizer poking through, now you can trim that off. Sometimes this happens I have never in my life, no matter what pattern it has been, been able to get all of the Peltex stuffed all the way down to the bottom. Okay, now one thing I do like to do 
um, is just to place a couple of clips on here just to keep that top from, I guess, stretching out or doing anything weird while I'm working with it. Now the flap is completely assembled. So you've got your magnets on the back and that's done. Now you can set this to the side and we're gonna move on to the back pocket. Okay, for the back pocket piece, you're going to take the lined, ver the, uh, the, ugh. Okay, when you start off with the back pocket, you're going to take the pocket lining that has been interfaced. So grab that piece and also grab your elastic. And what you're going to do is you're going to place this elastic one and a quarter inches away from the top edge. So what we'll do, let me grab, I've got a very large ruler here and I'm going to leverage the power of math and this table to mark like so, so I don't have to actually mark my fabric at all where I wanna place it. So I can just place it here like that. Now, I am actually going to use pins with this portion. So I'm going to pin it in now, but I'm gonna sew along this edge here in that direction. So make sure you place the pins in the correct direction so you don't hurt yourself. So we'll place those pins right along that bottom edge because that's where we're gonna sew is just that bottom edge. You do not need to worry about switching to um, a stretch needle or anything for this, nor do you need to use um, a stretch stitch. We're just going to use a straight stitch. This is going into a bag, not your waistline. Okay, so we're just gonna make sure everything's aligned and looking good. It's not critical, but I, uh, I am a touch on the OCD side, okay? All right, so when we go stitch, we're gonna stitch from this edge, just as close to the end as you can. And that's why I kinda like getting this uh, elastic because it has lines, so I can just kinda follow that line. If you need help, then you can take like a disappearing ink pen uh, or chalk and mark the line. Um, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stitch right along the bottom edge as close as you can get. You're gonna switch back down to a normal stitch length because remember you were top stitching in the previous step. And right along the edge, I want you to back stitch and then sew. Very carefully keeping your stitching right on that bottom edge. And don't pull the elastic, just let the machine guide it through. If you pull on it, then what you're going to do is you're gonna cause this pocket lining to bunch up. And that is something you don't want right here. So don't. I know the urge to grab elastic and pull is great, but please refrain. The machine will do what it needs to do. Especially this one, I'm kind of cheating. It's a walking foot, so it's kind of, it's got a mind of its own. All right, when you get to the end, I want you to back stitch. And that's it. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to take this and fold it in half, ignoring the excess for the elastic. I left excess just in case. <laughs> also, it ensures that that's going to get caught. And finger press this so that you can find the center. So we're gonna finger press that. Now, I'm gonna fold this open. And this is where one of these cutting guides come, these, these mats come really handy. Um, you're going to start by making one inch slots. So we will start here at the middle. I'm gonna mark that with some chalk. And then one inch over from that, mark. And you're gonna keep doing this all the way across to the left and the right of the middle. The cards are, for, for the, the switch in particular, are about, uh, I wanna say seven eighths of an inch wide. So this is pretty much what you need, little one inch slots. 
and it holds them very snugly so they don't come slipping out. And one of the things I noticed in a lot of the uh, cases that were available at the time, I mean, now, of course, it's different, but three years ago, all of the cases seemed to have like this, uh, these pockets under the flap that were made of pleather. And all those are going to do is, is uh, stretch out over time and fall apart on you, which is why you use elastic and it's held behind a zippered pocket. Um, also, if you have more Switch games than you should, like me, um, there's extra space at the bottom of the pocket to kind of just chuck them in there. But you'll see. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go back to the machine and sew. And what we'll do is we'll start at the top and backstitch and then sew to the bottom and backstitch. Cut and move along just like that. But you need to make sure you cut at the bottom here so you don't trail along a bunch of these uh, threads. I mean, technically you can and then cut them later and clean it up, but that's what you'll wanna do is backstitch, stitch down normally, backstitch, move over, and do the same thing for all of these pockets. Keep that normal stitch length and start at the leftmost and backstitch and stitch all the way down, but only to about where you need to be for that last stitch and back stitch. And then come up and clip threads. You can clean these up in a bit. We're just gonna move right along and let that sweet, sweet music take you away. And now that you're done, you're going to take these back, these beautiful card slots, and trim this mess up. Okay, so you can see I already went ahead and I cleaned up before coming back over here. And that's because I'm using nylon thread, so I have to kind of burn the ends. Um, so if you want, you can test your pockets. Go ahead and, and put one of your cartridges inside and make sure that everything is good. You see, you don't want them to be too tight because if they're too tight, then it kind of bows up the pocket, but they are going to very snugly hold your games in place so they don't just like flop out of there while you're running around from zombies or something. So you should be safe there. So now we can take this part and move it off to the side and get to the zippered portion of the back pocket. I want you to get pieces C and D. And this is going to be the two exterior back pieces. And what you want to do is you're going to put them in a way that you would expect them to be oriented when you have finished sewing and flip them up, okay? So that means, like, see how I have cut right here in, in between nook? So I don't want this to be facing the wrong way because it'll look really weird. So I'm gonna do it this way. So I'll put them together. So that's how I like the final look to be. And I'm going to fold this top piece over so that right sides are together. And what we're gonna do is sew along this edge. So what you're gonna wanna do in this case is you want to mark an inch and a half on either end. So just a little mark on either end, an inch and a half away from the edge. You will stitch a normal stitch length from this end to the first mark. Then you will switch to a very long basting stitch, six millimeters, whatever you can do. It's just to kind of hold this together temporarily so that you can put the zipper in. This is kind of my pseudo slackers way of doing an invisible zipper. When you get to the other mark, switch back to a normal stitch length and stitch all the way to the end. You're gonna back stitch at each of these ends here and on either side. Don't worry about back stitching like through here. But 
Uh, so let's put some clips in on those marks and one or two in the middle just so everything stays where it should be and go to the machine. When you get to the machine, make sure that you have a correct uh, stitch length for normal stitch length, 2.5 to 3.5, depending on what kind of fabric you're using. You're gonna do this stitch a half inch away from the edge. So that's going to be your seam allowance, particularly for this thing. Start off first by back stitching. Stitch normally up to that first marker. Whoop, there goes my machine being weird. When you get to that first mark, and you might want to hand crank just to be sure, back stitch. Now you're sitting at that mark. I want you to crank your stitch length up to as about as high as you can do. Five to six millimeters is perfect. It's just to be um, a light basting stitch. Some machines actually have that built in. Feel free to use that if you have it. And then you're going to stitch, again, staying a half inch away from the edge, that large stitch all the way to the end. Well, to the next mark. So we come up on that next mark and we're going to switch back to a normal stitch length. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that needle down. I'm gonna back stitch and stitch the normal stitch length all the way to the end and back stitch once you get there just to secure the stitching. So you can see I went ahead and I got the iron out. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's a lot easier if you're going to take this piece here and try to get this flattened. If you don't steam it out, then depending on the fabric that you're using, it's just not going to lay flat enough for you to accomplish this easily. So you can finger press, I just don't think you should. So we're gonna take this iron, but a quick disclaimer about the iron. It has a sensitive touch here. So it drops when I'm gonna use it and comes up <laughs> when I'm not using it. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm going to set my room on fire here. So we're gonna take this piece and after you finger pressed it open, go ahead and take your iron and steam this pocket open. And I meant to steam it. <laughs> it's just lazy. Okay, so that's great. All right, so now we have that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently set this off to the side. You gotta be super careful. Okay, now, now that that's been moved, you're going to take this piece and flip it back over like this to expose this end here. Now, one thing that will be very helpful to you is to mark where you had put those inch and a half lines just on the inside. I also like to do this on the outside. And this is so that I know where I need to, about where I need to stop. And of course, do this with chalk or something that can be easily removed. So inch and a half away from either edge. This is for later. So when I need to unpick the, the, the big old basting stitches in the middle here, that, that will expose the zipper once we're done. Now, you're gonna get your zipper. The zipper head needs to be face down. So does the tape. So the zipper needs to go right side down against this. One thing that helps that you can absolutely use if you want is double-sided tape. I am going to take advantage of that because I don't wanna cuss on this video and I will if I can't use double-sided tape with the zipper. <laughs> Sorry, it's true and you all know it, but no one will admit to it. So I'll just go ahead and do this so I don't get taken off of YouTube. Okay, that's nice. Yay. Okay, I'll take the, 
the paper off. Very gently. Sometimes on the quarter inch tape, it's a little harder to do. This is actually leather tape, so it's a lot sturdier for bag making. I definitely, you can't use this on clothing or on a stitch that will be um, visible later. So once again, right side down and make sure that the zipper head is right around that first mark. The zipper doesn't have to go all the way across. What I did was I gave, I gave enough of a zipper measurement so that people wouldn't end up accidentally um, purchasing a zipper that was just a little too, a little too short, like just too short or, or just too, uh, you know, darn long. <laughs> so I like to just put my, my thumb, my thumb and my forefinger on either side of the zipper teeth and walk it down so that it's matched up to the seam and just roll it down and stick it. And you'll find that leather tape, which I'll link in the description, is super sturdy and wonderful for bag making. Um, it has been a godsend for the zippers. Okay, so we have marked that. Now, Hail Mary, you're gonna flip this over. Now we're going to top stitch it. I advise you putting on a zipper foot if you have one because you can't do my little trick of just moving the zipper head out of the way just yet. But if you want, you can absolutely do this. You can already, you can go in here and just, you can see the stitching, just very gently remove a few of those stitches and you can expose the zipper head just so you can kind of wiggle it out of there. And it's not, right in the way and it's bulky. I do admit that this is one heck of a trick and I do this on clothing because I am a heathen. But now we've got the zipper head kind of out of the way. Okay, now that the zipper has been placed down very securely with the tape, and this is why I suggest the tape, is you're going to take the lined pocket piece, the, the, the lining uh, that has the interfacing and the game card slots that you made. Make sure that the end is facing up and away from you so that the card slots are not challenging gravity. So you're gonna take that and you're gonna flip it so that it is right side facing down. And always the stitches are a good guideline for knowing if you're doing this correctly or not because you won't have any stitching along the top of the pockets. So that's how you know you're facing the right way. Now, we're going to line up the pocket lining to the top of the zipper. I start first by placing pens, just like this. And I usually only need about three. I always try to say that so I don't hurt myself in the middle of doing this. And go all the way through. Okay, like that. Now, before we move along, I do want to explain something. This pocket piece is excessive in length and it doesn't have the tight little corner, as you can see here. My quick explanation for why I did that is because I didn't want people to sue me for emotional damage for having to cut out too many pattern pieces and it's easier to cut out two of these small rectangles and just trim away the excess later. Okay, that's why I did that. Take this and flip it over and you'll see the pens on the other side, but you won't be able to remove them when you're top stitching this guy. So you're gonna take them and hold it very carefully and flip it over and put the pen on the right side. The pens were only there to secure it while you were flipping the piece over. So hold it down and then put the pen back in on the other side. See what I'm doing there? Sneaky, sneaky. So that's in, and of course you can flip it over and just double check that everything's in place where it should be. Now, 
at the machine, what we're going to do is, again, you're going to put on a zipper foot so you don't have to kind of wiggle around this guy. And then you're going to stitch a quarter inch away from the seam to top stitch it with a top stitch length. Make sure that you have the top stitching stitch length selected and a zipper foot. <laughs> Can't emphasize this enough. And you're going to stitch a quarter inch away from the edge using your zipper foot. Start off with a back stitch and go ahead and continue stitching down perfectly normally with that top stitch length. And of course, when you get to pens, very carefully slide them out. And back stitch at the end. All right, and that's putting on the top piece for your pocket. But you don't want to open up the zipper and see this and raw, right? So let's get the other end of the pocket lining in place. All right, now for the weird part. Take the whole thing and make sure that it is right side facing down. Get this pocket piece and fold it up and I want you to pin it out of the way. This is so you don't accidentally stitch over it when you're attaching the other bit of the pocket lining. So we're just gonna move that out of the way just like that. All right, now grab the uninterfaced pocket piece and you're going to put it right side facing down on the other side. So if you want your pocket piece to look like this, it's the way I suggest, put it in the, because I don't have directional fabric, but you may, okay? So take the fabric and lay it the way you want it, right side facing up, and then flip it over. And just like we did with the other bit, we're gonna go ahead and put in some pens along the work. like so, all the way through. Flip this over, secure the area where the pen is coming out right, I usually put, just put my fingers right in the middle there and slide it out and then move the pen to the front. And do that for all of the pens that you put in. I am brave and only do three. If you do more than that, doesn't mean you're not brave, it just means you're not brave and dumb. Okay, now take this back to the machine and do the same kind of top stitch a quarter inch away from the middle seam here with a top stitch stitch length. At the edge, I want you to back stitch and then continue to stitch along the edge. Be careful around that zipper head, it's a doozy. If you feel more comfortable, you can pause your stitching, like so, when removing your needles, pens rather, sorry and backstitch at the end. Okay, this is what everything should look like right now. You're gonna have excess pocket stuff, you're gonna have excess zipper and all that. Don't worry about that. We will trim all of that away later. I am very paranoid about trimming zippers before it's too soon. <laughs> Flip everything over and pull down the pocket piece. You're gonna wanna press this. So I'm gonna reach over and grab everything and gently press this down. I'm avoiding the pens I still have in there. Okay, now take out those pens and this will free that top pocket piece to come down and press this down as well. And you can see none of this stuff lines up, it's fine. 
this is fine. This is why we left all of that excess fabric is so that we can do something with this later and also get people off my back about having too many pattern pieces. Okay, so now that that's a bad thing. Okay, now everything is pressed down. You can, if you want, pen this just so it doesn't slip and slide around on you. We'll just do that. But flip this all over. Everything is nice and smooth. And what you want to do is you want to trim all this away. So, actually, I was going to use a rotary blade, but I don't want to live dangerously today. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those bottom corners just like that. even trimming the bottom one. There we go. Okay. Now, trim away at the bottom so that the pocket is flush with the base of the bag. So, I'm going to go over why you do that. One, you don't have an extra super special pocket piece and you can use the same for each and you're not really wasting that much fabric, okay? Two, this pocket is going to be very tight in the back. So it's not going to be loose, it's not gonna flop around and when you wanna see the, game, the games, they're not like bunched up and falling out. This is to keep everything nice and secure. Now, I want you to take some clips and clip all this together so it stays nice and flush and you don't lose track of it. If you would like, you may do a very nice small eighth of an inch basting stitch along the edge if you feel more comfortable. All right, to open up the zipper, just as I did to free this little guy, you go in with a seam ripper and just gently start picking all out your basting stitches. Now for, for anybody on a domestic machine, this will probably be a super easy step. I, however, happen to be on an industrial using some very thick thread. So I have to be a little careful because I don't wanna accidentally pull at the fabric and rip the fabric. That would really suck. This is honestly the only part of the bag that is complicated. The rest of it is, is really simple and it's just like putting together a very small and quick messenger. So if you've made it this far, you're a winner. Now if you open up that zipper and look, there are your game pockets. Now, I have a pen in there so it's you know, whatever, but those are your pockets. All right, now we can move this slightly off to the side, but not too far off to the side because we are going to need it again soon. Grab your exterior main piece B. Now you need to put the female end of the magnetics onto the front of this piece. So I'm gonna flip it over so that it's right side down. Then I'm gonna grab my pattern piece. Once again, you don't have to have an acrylic, but I do, so I'm gonna use it. <laughs> neener neener and I'm going to use the pattern to mark where the centers of those magnets need to go all right so grabbing those magnetics I'm just going to take one of the washers and center it over the dot and mark where the prong should be cut Gently cut those open. Okay, now from the right side, insert the magnetic prongs to the back. Now we need to grab some Peltex. I, so I always keep my scraps because of this, by the way. 
but cut some little squares of stabilizer. If you have them, if you don't have them, then that's fine. A lot of people actually will take duct tape and put duct tape over their magnets, um, but that can wiggle away over time and it can eat away at the fabric. So I tend not to. So I use natural, natural materials such as this. And if you're, if you're doing this pattern with Decaville in the flap instead of Peltex or some other kind of cotton uh, fiber based uh, stabilizer, then you can actually uh, take a bit of that and use that instead too. It's all to just strengthen the hold on these guys and also to protect the fabric underneath the prongs, which may or may not be why people fold inward. I just don't like it. Okay, and then fold these guys out like that. And that's all you have to do for the front piece. Now what we're gonna do with the back, you're gonna take the exterior back that I told you to just gently set to the side. And you're going to put these guys together, right sides together. It is more important for the sides and the bottom to line up than this top edge. Don't worry about that because remember what I said about the zipper sizes and if you installed using like this is this is a dress zipper. So this is a number 2.5 as opposed to using a 4.5 or a 5 that's more for like handbags. So a lot of this kind of depends on that, right? Cuz you you may have some excess space. Okay. So you're going to take this piece here and you're gonna flip it over so the right sides are together. Use the clips or the pens that you had already used in the previous step to just kind of line things up. And don't worry about all of this. You can get rid of that. We will as soon as we're done with this, one thing at a time. And I need one more clip. And line everything up. Okay, leave that top edge open. And you see, I've got a little bit of extra in the back and that's fine. That gives you a little extra for the flap to come pulling over. As long as everything lines up at the corners, you're good. So, and I only mention that because I know a lot of people will sometimes run into that and sometimes it's because of the zip. Okay, so we're going to take this, <laughs> however you prefer, and we're gonna stitch down the side, cut. Do not stitch this. Stitch it along the bottom, cut, skip that part, and then stitch along the side here. You want to skip the corners because these are going to be boxed corners and this is what creates the depth for the console to slip into the pocket. So let's go. Move back to a normal stitch length for construction and with a half inch seam allowance, we're gonna start stitching. Mind you, it's a half inch. The pocket stuff was all done with a quarter inch because you were working with very light fabrics. Now that we're starting to do main assembly, it's going to be a half inch to give you some wiggle room. Okay, and we're stitching down, back stitch, and then go the rest of the way, making sure that you catch everything, all this extra stuff, sorry. And you'll see that we're gonna come really darn close to the edge here, that pocket. And that's fine. Back stitch once you get to the end and then free your stitching. And I have this horrible habit of cleaning up, sorry. Okay, skipping the corner, start at the bottom and back stitch. And once you get to the end, I want you to back stitch and free it. Okay, so we're done there. So now we're gonna cut it up, get rid of it, clean it up, skip the corner, 
and on the other end, back stitch. And back stitch when you get to the top. Again, leaving the top wide open. Now has come the time to trim. Aren't you glad? So, when you take the side and trim it down a quarter inch on all of the seams that you just stitched. Being careful when you get to the zipper not to like chop your fingers off or anything because that would suck. Make it very hard to, to sew. Okay, so trim that down. All the sides that you stitched. Okay, and clean up our mess. Now, we've got these open corners. I've done an intense tutorial on boxed corners before, but essentially what you wanna do is just press these guys together so their seams are together and laying in a flat position. I tend, at least when they're, they get to a point where they're slightly bulky, to put them in opposite directions of each other, but clip that down into place. And do the same thing on this end Make sure if you're going to push them in opposite directions that you do it in the same manner for each side. So this doesn't end up twisting along the bottom seam. And put a clip in there. So now what we'll do is we'll go over to the machine, clip side up, and we'll stitch a half inch away from the edge there all the way across the corner. And that'll close that up and it'll create the depth. Okay, starting, it helps to kind of line it up down here at the bottom, but also observe you need to start stitching up there. Move we'll back stitch. And then stitch all the way down, trying to maintain that half inch. If you need help with this, you can get a half inch guide like that, or a magnetic guide, sorry, and put that down on your machine. I'm just going to eyeball it. And when you get to the other end, back stitch as well. You need to make sure that you cover point to point on either end, because otherwise you'll get this really weird gap. So there's one of them. And now we're gonna do the other. Just that a little. And now we're going to cut these and we're going to take them back over to the cutting table and trim them up. Get your big old scissors and trim down these corners as well. You want to leave them to be about a quarter of an inch. And be careful when doing this, don't you accidentally cut yourself. And that's basically it for that. So now we're going to flip it right side out like so and just Poke those corners out with your fingers. And now you can see that we already have depth built in here. The pocket's nice and tight, and all sealed up on the inside as well, which is great. So now comes the time where you're going to attach the flap. So you're gonna grab your flap piece, which you had set aside earlier, and you're going to take it and set it down on the table, right side facing up. Grab the exterior and have the back face like this, here's the back facing you, and then flip it over so that it is sitting in this manner. So basically the right side up for the flap is sitting right side down for the back panel piece. And then the front is facing up at you too. So this is what it would look like if you had swung it open. That's the way to kind of look at it as a messenger bag. Cause really it is a very tiny messenger bag without a crossbody strap. So what you'll want to do now is you're going to clip them into place. And it's usually about a quarter inch away from that seam uh, for the side seam. 
and I more or less eyeball it. You can measure it. I do measure it when I'm done, though, just to make sure I didn't put anything, because you don't want it county cornered or it won't sit correctly. This is the only downside to doing a messenger style bag without, um, without a gusset is because the, mess in, the the flap doesn't quite sit correctly and you can't have the flap go all the way to the edge because then it'll do this really awkward wrap around thing when you flip it to the front. Um, so yeah, that's a little annoying, but if you know to, to basically take off the quarter inch, then it works out. Okay, and then just place those clips in there and that should be nice and tight. And so now what we're gonna need to do is I like to tell people, go ahead and baste this down. So use a longer stitch length, or you can use a real stitch length, but just do it within like, um, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, just along the edge, just to keep it in place, because we're gonna end up manipulating this quite a bit in order to get the lining portion um, bagged with it later. So we'll just gently stitch across the top here. Place your work underneath. Try to stay as close to the edge as you can. Back stitch. And just stitch right along that edge. Just to keep things in place. When you get to the end, this is the only part that really drives me nuts about the patterns, those tight corners. So, Make sure it's lining up and not pulling down on this. So you keep everything lined up the way you need and then back stitch once you get to the end there. And that's how you're going to base that into place. The time has come for the lining. So you're gonna get your two lining pieces. Remember again, I'm using waterproof canvas, right? So yours should be interfaced. You can't just rely on the foam alone to interface it. It's not gonna work. Now, you can attach the foam in one of two ways. You can take it to a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch, and you can zigzag over the edges along the side and the bottom, and that actually does a couple of things. One, it does the basting for you, but also it, kind of helps to, to compress the foam at the edges so it's not as bulky in the seams. Now, I, I've never had a problem with that, so that's up to you. I am lazy. I like to use basting spray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, spray this basting spray onto my foam and then <laughs> attach the lining to it. So I'm gonna get that prepared and then we're gonna show you how to sew it. I'm done preparing the pieces. So this is probably the easiest thing that you're gonna end up doing for the whole bag. You're gonna take these guys and put them right sides together. And what we'll do is we'll clip these ends just like that. On either side. But with the bottom, we're going to only go in maybe an inch and a half to two inches. We need to leave that for the flipping. So we'll leave that open. We're not gonna stitch that. We're also not going to stitch these little corners here. This is gonna be how we make our box seam and it gives the bag depth for the lining. So looking at this this way here, so it's less confusing, we're gonna stitch down here, stop, Stitch from here to here only and stop, making sure to back stitch. Back stitch, stitch to the end, cut, <laughs> skip the corner, and then sew up the other side. So let's go do the thing. Starting at the top, half inch seam allowance. And one thing that I actually advise to do here is to stitch a half an inch for like the first inch or so, and then taper in a, just a little bit. And that'll make sure that that interior pocket is nice and tight. All right, so you're gonna back stitch up here, stitch that half inch seam allowance. You can taper out a little bit, a little, little inward, not too far inward, or you won't have enough for the bottom here. And actually, if you want to get to the bottom, go ahead and go back out to a half inch and back stitch. 
at the other end. Go ahead, back stitch. And only stitch up to where that marker was and back stitch here to reinforce it. So when you're pulling the bag through to birth it right side out, you don't accidentally end up um, pulling at the seams enough to rip them. Slide your work all the way down to the next pin or clip. Half inch seam allowance, back stitch. And stitch all the way to the end and back stitch at that corner piece. And on the final side, half inch away, back stitch, and go all the way up the side. Now, let's go trim this up a bit because these are really bulky and you do not want this in the bag. Take your scissors and trim the sides down. Now, for the bottom, we're gonna be careful. We wanna leave this here because it'll be a lot easier for us to sew this shut in the end. So, at that point where you stopped, I want you to taper it inward and only cut down this portion. Same thing here, taper and trim. So you can see we taper out this way toward the corners. Rawr. And there's the hole where we'll flip. Now I've got to grab my clips because I always leave them at my machine. To make the boxed corners, we're going to put these seams together so squish these down so that the seams are aligned. I do have an in-depth tutorial on how to accomplish this if this is not visual enough. Same thing on the other side. Push them so the bottom seam and the side seam are together and put a clip there. When we go to the machine, you're gonna put your work down like this and stitch a half inch away from that edge where the corner is located, one half inch away. And you wanna go from the very top to the very bottom, don't leave any gaps. Starting a half inch away and at the very, very top, using the, this section here to be your guide, back stitch. And so all the way across, maintaining a half inch distance and back stitch once you get to the end. And then when I say a half inch distance, I mean from here. If it helps, you can draw a line. Okay. So that's one of them. Now for the other, you do the same thing. Half inch away, start at the very, very top, back stitch. and stitch all the way to the end and back stitch. So now you have your exterior and your lining and everything is ready to go for what we call bagging. So what you're gonna do for this step is you're going to take the lining inside out and shove the exterior right side out to the inside of this. So you're gonna, that's what you mean like bagging. You're gonna take this and bag it into that. It does help to kind of fold this up. And this is another reason why I prefer to use something like Peltex is because this, if you crease this, it will steam out later. So I do kind of fold it up a bit just to ensure that it's not gonna 
wrap around and cause way too much bulk. But you're just going to slide that in there. It's more like shoving, really. You're just going to shove it in there real good. And then what you'll do is you'll line up the side seams. And you're going to put clips in there. Do the side seams first because that ensures that everything is lined up the way that it is intended to be. Apologies if this is kind of like off camera because it, 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 the, flap, the flap itself can be like a really tight area. So you, you'll see what, we, what I mean as I work my way around this and stitch it down. All that matters is that the top quarter inch of this is laying flat. If, if you've got wrinkles everywhere else on the inside, who cares? But it does help to kind of get it to lay correctly. <laughs> Makes your life a little easier. So we're just gonna clip all the way around, lining up edge to edge. And this is where if you had decided to, uh, to do the uh, zigzag stitch to attach, you would probably have a, a little bit of an easier time than what I'm doing here. But again, I like to live dangerously and to put my clips on backwards. Okay, I'm gonna raise this one up just a little. It's very important that these, that these seams line up, especially the flap. Okay, lining up, continuing to clip around. There's another reason why I'm an advocate for basting the flap down as well. Okay, now, when we go to the machine, I don't want you to be afraid of manipulating this. Moving from here to get over here can be really tight on some machines, especially if you're not using a free arm like me. Go ahead and beat the crap out of the bag. Squish it, manipulate it, do what you have to. Uh, just be careful as you do it to ensure that your needle is halfway down through the through the, the uh, bag while you're doing that kind of manipulation so that the work doesn't kind of zigzag around and flip around. I like to go ahead and start at one of the corners. It, it kind of makes things a little easier for me to start out that way. So I am literally squishing this down. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the view a little so you can see just how much I'm squishing this down. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> That's what steam is for later. So go ahead and do what you need to do to get the work under the needle. And you're only going to be stitching a quarter inch away. Okay, so we got that in place. I'm gonna back stitch and continue stitching while squishing the mess out of the work, it's gonna be fine. And you can see that I've got that double stitch here because we had basted on the flap, so it's gonna be double secure, which is excellent. Sometimes, especially with larger bags like the Mighty Messenger, you will find that people will actually lift by the flap. So I always try to tell people to reinforce the flap seam by stitching another one just behind it. And even if we hadn't had basted it on, I probably would have advised that you go back over it after stitching everything together and putting another one back there. Now, here's the part where it's like, ah, I can't move it. You can, you just have to be willing to squeeze. See, squeeze. Just squeeze the bag and everything will be great. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the needle halfway down. You'll see how I manipulate. I'm gonna kinda just tug this forward and squish. More squishing, all the squishing. We're coming up on that again. So put the needle halfway down and rotate as much as you can and squeeze. That's gonna start, that's gonna become a sticker at some point, I think. Squeeze. 
Okay, <laughs> and continue sewing once you are done squishing. And back stitch. Okay, <laughs> the hard part's sort of kind of over. Ta -da! It's not a bag yet, but it will be. See the giant hole we left? Now we're gonna flip it right side out. If you want, you can trim the front of this down. Um, I, I tend to just leave it in place um, because it's only a quarter inch, but if you want, you can. Just don't trim the back where the flap is if you're gonna do it. Leave, leave that in place. Um, but always make sure, go around, make sure you caught everything. Sometimes when you're manipulating around the corners and doing the squeezing, uh, you can miss stuff, um, but this is looking good. So you're going to open up the hole I'm, I'm trying to describe this in a way that is not lewd, but pull open the hole and I want you to take your thumbs and press and roll it outward. You do not want to reach into said hole and just pull out the work because you could pull and rip things. Ask me how I know. So take your thumbs and push instead of pull. The lining can take a beating. Your exterior probably cannot. See how that, see how that just nice and gently came out? A lot of people want to reach in and grab the flap and pull by the flap. Uh, that way lies madness and mistakes were made. So you can see this is, this is all bent up and beat up, but a good press afterward will make it look really nice. I swear, <laughs> I didn't just send you down a dark path. Now, go ahead and push out these corners. Just like that, corners, corners. And now we're gonna take this open hole and kind of fold it down about a quarter of an inch on one of the sides. And I'm just gonna put, put a clip in place, or 20 of them, as it were. And I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna fold it down a quarter inch. But then I'm gonna pull it up no reason I have to do this because the foam kind of makes it a little difficult. You may not have as many difficulties as me. because so I've got foam plus like this waterproof canvas. And I'm just going to fold everything over and it kind of, it, it, it closes up the edge. Okay. So at this point you can make one of two choices. You can slip stitch it by hand if you prefer that. Or you can just machine stitch it as close to the edge as possible. No one's going to see this. It's going to be at the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to stitch across this way after I satisfy my OCD nature and flip that around. Okay, so from open end to other open end, just stitch that shut. At the machine, I'm not gonna change my uh, stitch length yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and as close to the edge as possible, start that stitch on my back stitch. and then stitch all the way down to the end, making sure that those ends of the folds are lined up. And about here's where the hole ends. So I'm gonna keep my finger on that. And back stitch when you get to the end. And that's how you close that up. Ta -da! Still not a bag. Okay, now, you're gonna take everything and flip it to the inside. Okay, it seems easier than it actually is, but go ahead and just flip everything down to the inside like so, because now we need to top stitch it. If you don't top stitch it, it's going to look really funky. So I advise that you do this. Um, some people I've seen skip this step and it can look really loosey-goosey around the edge. Uh, top stitching does a couple of things. It ensures that this lining doesn't flop out on you uh, every time you pull the, the portable console system in and out of the case. But the other thing is it also just looks nice and it compresses it down. Um, it makes it look really nice and professional. Not that everybody else doesn't look professional, just, you know, we've had our moments. Okay, this is just because I'm using that waterproof canvas and it's, it's, it's stiffer than a bad drink. Okay, so now what you're gonna do 
is get some clips or pens and I like to kind of just use my thumbs to roll the lining and get everything set up nicely and put my clips in. And that's just going to hold it in place because as you, as you recall, we had to squeeze and we will have to do that again. But when you're squeezing for a top stitch like this, um, it can kind of slide the lining away from the exterior um, and you, you may end up with some wrinkles. And so I put the clips in here just to ensure that everything is in the place that it needs to be as I move around and do the top stitch. Now, you'll notice we cannot put clips in the back and that's because the flap is there. And that's fine too. It might be very hard to put one right here. <laughs> so that's where the seam is. So this is probably the only part that would be difficult on a domestic machine with the top stitching. So you could steam it before you go. Make sure you use a larger needle and go slowly. You may want to hand crank it. But if you steam it, it'll loosen things up a bit before you go over to the sewing machine. So that's just a little trick. Okay, then rolling down on this end too. I'll put one here. Now, for this part, I'm basically just going to have to grab it and push it and manipulate it while I am sewing at the machine. So you'll see like the foam actually, it's, it's kind of fussy, but it's meant to be nice and sturdy and keep your console safe. Because if, if this is sitting in another bag and you slam the bag down, you don't want any vibrations to hurt your, your console. That would be terrible. So, so that's what that's about. So we'll just be careful when we get to the back edge here. Um, now, I am using a flatbed machine. That means I need to go ahead and, you're right, flip it all inside out. And that's because I want the upper thread to be what you see for the top stitch. So I'm just gonna lay this all flat as best I can. And you'll see how I'm manipulating it. I will be very clear in communicating that in the video. So let's go do the thing. I like to start at a corner. So what I'll do is I'll start off right over here. And you only want to do about a quarter inch for your seam allowance on this. So I'm going to line it up. And again, it's OK for you to squish this around. I'm going to go ahead and put my needle about halfway down like that. Set your stitch length to a top stitch length. I have forgotten that before. And there is a difference. It shows off the thread better for one. And for another, like I have variegated thread on this one, so it's just really pretty. It just shows off better. Anyway, that's still the same thing, but whatever. Okay, so, and the reason I start in the corner is so when I back stitch, you don't see like the double up threads like in the front or the back. It's hiding over in the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the seam very carefully by back stitching. And if you're on a domestic machine, take that very slowly. Hammer it, steam it up, heat it up, whatever you need to do, you should be able to sew that. I wrote this pattern while I still had a domestic machine, so you will be fine. Okay, so just very slowly, because this is a very visible seam, top stitch around the edge a quarter inch away. One of my threads is kind of showing up in the front and I need to slide it to the back, it's driving me crazy. Okay, there. <laughs> And you'll note, I always put the needle halfway down before I start manipulating anything. I'm a very big fan of the squeeze. So please continue to squeeze in order to get the work the way you need it. Now we're coming up on the other corner. 
So here's the part where we don't have clips to rely on. I'm going to be pulling and tugging on this to get it to lay flat. So I'm gonna lay this down like this and then just pull on the back of it as well. I'm not as concerned about the inside and how it looks, but the outside, you can actually catch it. See how it wants to fold up? And you lose a quarter inch of space for your bag, your, uh, your case, sorry. So fold it down, press it and hold it. Also tugging on the opposite side of the lining to flatten it as well. It's a bit of work, but you have to do this with a lot of messengers anyway. This is also great because it means that your flap now has not two, but three stitches holding it in place. It's not going anywhere. It's like a Twinkie for the apocalypse. It'll be here after the zombies have come and gone. Okay, pulling again, tugging and pulling. Careful not to sew my finger. Squeeze, because we're coming up on that last little bit. And backstitch once you get to that corner where you originally started, and that is it. Cool, now we can flip this back out. Now if you were on a machine with a free arm, you don't have to worry about this step, because clearly you didn't do this. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> But you do want to get the bag kind of pushed out and into the shape that you would like it to be in instead of a potato shape because I had it in potato form. And you'll see it's kind of, you know, it's got a lot of puff to it and everything. So what we're going to do is grab the iron that I had carefully sitting off to the side. And I have that metal tag on the front, so I'm going to go in from the back here. And I'm just going to gently go over this, and I'm going to steam it. And the steam is going to help loosen up the fibers of the stabilizer that I had put on the inside. And get rid of any wrinkling that I would have had. You see, my outside actually looks pretty darn good, too, all things considered. I really did put it through its paces with all the flipping but it did all right. Then again, I am using a canvas material, so that may play into it a little bit, but I usually go over my bags at the very end like this and just steam the mess out of them. And that helps get any, uh, rid of any of the wrinkles and it softens up the fiber so I can kind of smooth it out. So what you can do is wave it over and, and, and steam it and then smooth it and that helps. It helps with Decaville, it helps with Peltex and what have you. And then you can Snap that shut because you have made a portable co game console case for a Nintendo Switch, but I can't call it that because of legal reasons. Ta-da! Thank you for listening to me talk about sewing for so darn long. At this point, you guys should be well equipped to be able to create your own portable console case pattern. Please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I also stream on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash fierce kittens. Thank you so much. Bye.